I'm Mike Duffy, I'm the director of the Joan Ross Lane Center for Catholic Studies and Social Thought. So I want to welcome you to the Irby Ed Morgan Lecture. A tradition and characteristic uh, in the development of Catholic social thought over the past 100 years has been to build upon previous documents in that tradition. Caritas in Veritate, or uh, Charity and Truth, which is published this year by Pope Benedict, follows tr this tradition by building upon Populorum Progressio, or on the development of peoples, which was published for 40 years ago. And in the tradition, and on the 40th anniversary, the 50th anniversary, the 70th anniversary, whatever the number is, that particularly will uh, publish another, another document as, as this is done. I think in Jesuit education, uh, or I think the Jesuit education intersects well with the themes <coughs> found in these documents, particularly highlighting some recognition of the disparity of wealth between peoples, and through incorporating development as a means towards peace and justice around the world, rather than military forms of resolving conflict. Caritas and Veritate moves us deeper into, the, into these themes and beyond, as our speaker will illustrate this afternoon. And our speaker today is Father Jim Storms, who currently holds the Los Chiago Chair for Catholic Studies and Social Thought, at the Lane Center. Jim joined the Lane Center this summer uh, and is here for a two year appointment, which we're very happy uh, to have him with us. Jim is well known in the Jesuit world, uh, most recently for his tenure as the Secretary for the Social and International Ministries at the Jesuit Conference in Washington, D.C. He's also served as the provincial for the Maryland province of the Jesuits. He holds a master's degree in Latin American studies from the University of Texas at Austin, and a PhD in economics from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Jim is teaching a course this semester on Catholic Social Thought and the Economy. He'll offer the same course again next semester, and plans to focus his research while he's here with us for the next two years around international development, migration, how those things connect, and, and that sort of thing, so as he engages his, in his research. His experience, his research, and his global perspective serve well as a lens from which to interpret this new document for a world very different from 40 years ago when Pacquiao and Progressio was published. So, Jim, we're very happy that you've joined us at the Lane Center and just welcome you to this, this lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm still sort of the new kid on the block uh, here at uh, the USF and at, at, uh, at the Lane Center, so it's, uh, it's nice to, to be able to look out and actually there's some people I now know, you know, that uh, over the last couple of months I've gotten to, uh, gotten to meet, so it's great to, great to have you here. Thanks very much. Uh, Mike already uh, kind of gave a bit of the, the context for this in terms of the, the tradition uh, of Catholic social teaching, um, so I'll go right into a, a couple of thoughts about this document. What I'd like to do is to share with you uh, at least my sense of the vision of Benedict XVI in this encyclical in Latin, Caritas and Veritate, what I would call love and truth. Love and truth. Which is a vision of integral human development, and in that vision it includes both critiques and hopes. I also want to try to make sure that I show some connection of those hopes to the hopes of other people of goodwill. You know, the, the, uh, especially since the sec Second Vatican Council, the Vatican, the Church has always tried to address its concerns not only to Catholics, uh, but to all people of goodwill. <coughs> so for those of you who are not Catholics, you can't get away and leave the lecture because you're not Catholic. This is to all people of goodwill, and I'm sure everybody here is a person of goodwill. And to suggest finally what Benedict's message might be to this university, uh, what the challenge to the university might be, uh, both as an encouragement uh, and, as a, uh, and as a challenge. As I go through the talk, I'll try to use Benedict's own language, but I will spare you uh, too many citations on paragraph 63 and, 
et cetera, et cetera. Um, this 87, at least one of the, the publications, this 87 page document, it's wide ranging, moving back and forth between philosophical and theological categories and practical analyses, touches on issues from business models to bioethics, from immigration to media to the environment, to the connections between uh, uh, social science and life science, and obviously we can't summarize all of that today, but maybe let me begin by just looking at the, the title phrase, love and truth. You know, one of the more interesting and insightful comments on love and truth comes from the University of Chicago historian David Narenberg. In a review of the New Republic, he said, the fundamental claim that runs through Benedict's encyclical is that economic exchange requires love. And further, Benedict is asking, says uh, Narenberg, Benedict is asking a basic question about our markets and about our societies. Can the values that the market itself and that our society itself, the, the values that, that, uh, uh, that, that our society has, can they function properly with values that are produced inside of it? Or must those values come from outside? From the moral world? From God? And he notes that nobody's much interested in debating this crucial argument. There's lots of other things that people have picked up, but that kind of crucial argument, what's the role of love, what's the role of that, that sense of, of what drives the human person that I'll say a little more about. Um, it's one that, that at least Marienberg and others find hasn't been taken up to. And this, I think, points to the radical nature of Benedict's contribution to Catholic social teaching. By radical, I mean getting at the roots of Catholic social teaching. Uh, Mike mentioned there's been a whole tradition. I think Benedict in this really does uh, drive us deeper into understanding what, what underlies the values that are in Catholic social teaching that I'm sure most of us are very familiar with. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's, it's a uh, contribution, this focus on love, um, if only because of the word that he's using, caritas. Uh, which gets translated both as love, which I would use, uh, and it's a word, unfortunately, that gets used for all kinds of things, um, but it's also translated in many places as charity, and I think in the American context, charity mm, has a kind of weak feeling to it, you know, something that's kind of extra. And Bennett himself notes that the term has been misconstrued and distorted, but the Pope is very clear that love for him is the heart of what it means to be human, both as an individual and as a community. It's not saintly, extraordinary virtue, much less romantic feeling. It is the basic human, human dynamic, the principle and force behind the ways that we interact with each other, whether we know it or not. Whether we know it or not. It's the heart of, of authentic development for every person in society. This is true from the very origins of our existence, which he calls an astonishing experience of gift. Our very existence is an, an astonishing experience of gift. Whether we're talking about the universe that we inherit, or the life that we're given by our parents, or the share of God's own life, grace in Christ, love, which is by definition a gift of self, is the energy and basis for relationships. Benedict considers the key to understanding our humanity. 